Whiting here with another full-on gear review. And in this video, I'm reviewing the Bonafide EX123. Bonafide came out with their first kayak, the SS127, about five years ago. It was a fishing kayak and it really raised the bar for fishing and kayaks across the market. Now this is their first sit-in side kayak and they believe they've done it once again. They claim this kayak has unmatched stability, performance, and storage. That's a bold claim. And my job is to put this thing to the test, figure out, does it hold up? How does it compare to the other sit-in side recreational touring kayaks in the category? And what kind of bang for the buck do you get with this thing? The EX123 retails for 1100 US dollars. It's 12 feet, three inches long. It's 29 and a half inches wide. It weighs 67 pounds, and it has a capacity of 375 pounds. Its primary use is for calm waters. Now let's look at some of the EX123's key features. The EX123 has oversized grab handles. It has a deck dashboard with what they call the mini tub dry hatch. It's got a raised and removable seat. It's got a shallow molded in forward storage well with a hook resistant vinyl coated cover. It's got a stern hatch and it's got a stern bulkhead to separate the kayak into two compartments. It has bungees on the back hatch, two flush mount rod holders behind the seat. And on the inside, it's got deck traction pads for standing up and adjustable foot pegs. Now the hull has dual skid plates to protect the catamaran style hull design. Now that is a lot of features in a recreational touring kayak, but just because a boat has a lot of features doesn't mean they're smart features. And so let's take a quick look at the key features this boat has. Now let's start with the seat. What I love about this seat is the fact that it's elevated. You don't see that in a sit inside kayak very often. You see it on sit on top kayaks, but when you have an elevated seat, your butt is higher than your heels. That's just naturally a more comfortable sitting position for most people. If the boat provides the stability to support an elevated sitting position, I love that. What I also love about this seat is that it's removable. That's cool, and I've used camp chairs like this uh, before, and they are comfy. The bungee system here on the hatch, it's a great idea. I really like it, because the hatch, not only does it have bungees, I mean, that's, that's been done before, but the hatch has, is like a tray. It's like a mini tank well, so you could, it's gonna hold things in here. Now that I haven't seen on another kayak. It might be out there, but that's a great feature on a touring kayak. And up front here, instead of bungees, I'm not a big fan of bungees, but what they've done here is created again, a mini tank well. They actually have sides to this. Uh, and so even if this thing doesn't, you know, the real test is gonna be throwing something like a water bottle. I don't know if it's gonna stay, we'll test. It's not that tight that it's gonna hold the bun, the uh, water bottle in on its own, but the fact that there's an edge to this thing, it's not gonna go off. We'll soon find out if it actually holds. The last thing is the, uh, this dashboard. I like this addition. I think, uh, is it something I'm gonna use a lot? Well, if I was fishing, I definitely would use this. It's got the cup holders, but it's also got these trays for, I mean, this is the kind of thing you drop fishing lures in, and they've even you know drilled holes there so it doesn't just collect water. The water's gonna drain out. It's got the, uh, this is a dry hatch. I mean, dry for rain, weather, splashes, absolutely. If you flip this thing, I wouldn't put anything, well, I wouldn't put anything in there that you'd expect to be dry if you capsize and this thing stayed upside down for a prolonged period of time. But that's something I could test too, but I'm not gonna test capsizing in this video. Don't ask me to. <laughs> Otherwise, something to note about this kayak is it doesn't accept a skirt. It's got this, this edge to stop water from coming in, but there's no lip. So uh, this really, because of that, this boat is limited to, you know, sheltered waters, calm waters. I wouldn't want to take this into rough waters because, you know, water, you can't stop the water from coming in. 
Well, enough talking about this boat. It's time to start paddling this boat. Before I do though, please subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. And you know what? The biggest favor you could do me is leave me a comment down below and let me know if you like this review, if you want to see more reviews, what boat you'd like to see reviewed, and if you made a purchasing decision based on one of these reviews, please let me know in the comments section. Let's hit the water. Oh yeah. That's stable. Pretty cool, isn't it, Mr. Eagle? Hey, Mr. Beaver, you don't like me. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of cool seeing him slap and go under, but when you when a gator does that, it, and you're paddling down south, it feels different. All of a sudden, you're like, huh. Where did it go? Here's what I can tell you about the EX-123. Spoiler alert, they really met my expectations. Not in every way, and in, in some new ways I wasn't expecting. Let's start with performance. When it comes to performance, this thing just did a great job of traveling forward, and it also turns very well. Now, it doesn't have a drop skeg or a rudder. Uh, which isn't really a big deal unless you're paddling in, you know, rough or, or very windy conditions. Uh, so, you know, if you're in really windy conditions, it's, it's moderately windy. We found a nice calm spot right now, but it's been pretty windy out here and uh, it hasn't really been a problem at all. Now, stability. I don't think I've ever been in a more stable sit inside kayak. I definitely haven't been in a more stable sit inside kayak. This catamaran style hull on this thing is unbelievable. I mean, you like I the rule usually is you put you let your head get over the center line, you know, not over the kayak and you flip. In this case, like <laughs> I'm leaning pretty much as far as I can. And this kayak does not want to flip. As soon as you put it on edge, it just kind of bounces back to flat. Unbelievably stable. And that's why they have the foot pads in it and it's designed for standing as well. It was so easy to stand in this thing. I felt very comfortable standing in it. Exceptional, exceptional stability. I mean, how many kayaks can you genuinely fall asleep in and not even have to think about flipping? I've fallen asleep in a lot of kayaks, but you always, just as you're starting to fall asleep, you get the, oh, as the boat wobbles and you think you're gonna flip. This kayak, uh-uh, no, no. Just need some kind of headrest. Bonafide, can you work on that? Some kind of like cradle for your neck and to hold your head so you can pass out in complete luxury. Now features, um, in particular, uh, I was wondering about the uh, the bow bungee cover system here. Was it going to keep my gear in place? That's always been a frustration of mine with normal bungee systems on a, a rounder uh, decked boat. And I have my water bottle there. It hasn't budged an inch. Like I can shake this boat as aggressively as I want. And it's not moving. So, you know, I guess that that uh, answers that question. That's rock solid. I can also have my water bottle bottle in there and still fit my paddle in there for for a place to stow, which is really nice. One of the things I found that it has is it's got this little cell phone holder, so you can uh, prop your cell phone up, and you know, if you had maps on or something like that, nice thing. Or if you just wanted to stay in contact with people. That's a nice feature, although I was holding the cell phone like this and the wind blew my paddle, knocked it, the cell phone bounced out, hit my leg, landed in the boat. That's the good news. Lesson learned though, is that that's not necessarily a rock solid spot to put your cell phone. Features wise, that's about it, but let's talk about comfort now. Now, comfort of this boat, lots of room. You know, I'm six foot two, 195 pounds, and 
I could be much bigger in this boat. You know, I'd say that, you know, someone easily up to 250 pounds and uh, how much room do I have in the foot pegs? I still have plenty of room for the foot pegs to move. So, you know, this is a this is a boat that would be good for someone up to a fairly significant size. I would say the seat is probably the only part of this boat that somewhat disappointed me. It looks comfy and I love the fact that it's raised, uh, that sitting position with your butt higher. It's for me, it's more comfortable. I did some playing around with it to try to customize it because there's straps on it and I haven't been able to find a, you know, the sweet spot. It's, it's fine, it's comfortable. Don't get me wrong, I mean, it's not a bad seat, but it's just not the, uh, I, I find that this seat is designed for lounging and not, uh, you know, the ideal paddling seat. It's not really promoting good paddling uh, posture and, and support and, and you know, that's just my take on it. At this point, something else actually worth noting is I've also been testing this paddle. Wilderness Systems Apex Carbon Paddle. It's a full carbon paddle, super light, really nice paddle. You know, the neat thing about this paddle is that it's not a fixed length. It, uh, with this quick release, boom, I can change the length from 220 to, and, uh, to 240 centimeters. And on top of that, you can change to whatever twist you want. So cool paddle that way. That's particularly useful if you bounce around from different boats. There is no such thing as a one size fits all paddle. You can get a paddle that's reasonably good for different types of boat boats, but having the ability to change the length is a real, uh, is a real bonus. It does add weight and this boat would be exceptionally light if it wasn't for this system. Now it's just light. Uh, so if I was gonna spend the money and I didn't want that flexibility of length, you know, this might not be the ideal paddle, but you know, that being said, it's a beautiful feeling paddle, full carbon, super stiff, incredible amount of power you get from it. Nice, nice paddle. I think that's all I gotta say right now. <laughs> I'm gonna keep paddling. I've got about 15 minutes to get back to where I'm going and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. Back again. Well, I guess to sum it all up, you know, at 1100 bucks, the EX123 is a little bit more expensive than most kayaks in this mid-range rec touring class. But I think it warrants being a little bit more expensive. It does have some wonderful features. It's not what I'd call a high performance kayak, but it's, a, it's not a low performance kayak. It's a nice, middle of the road for me performing touring kayak with unbelievable stability, great features, great customization op uh, options. And uh, you know, this is a boat you could, this is a lifer boat. This is a boat you could get and it'd be, I'd be hard pressed to ever sell this kayak. It's, it's a kind of kayak that you're like, I'm not letting go of. Even if I'm not using it all the time, I'm not letting go of it. So. Anyway, there you have it, the Bonafide EX123. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think, and we'll see you again for another gear review.